Buy when the fast moving average crosses over the slow moving average and short when the fast moving average crosses below the slow moving average. You all have seen thousands of examples of this strategy, but does it actually work? I am going to go write some code in Thinkorswim so that we can automate the backtesting of this strategy and see if it is actually a profitable idea over time. While I'm working, you all be sure to like the video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss future strategy proof videos. Alrighty, I have finished up with the code. And as you can now tell from your thinkorswim chart, we are entering long when the fast moving average, which is represented by the cyan line on the chart, crosses above the slow moving average represented by the salmon colored line on your chart. And then it is both exiting the long and flipping into a short position when the fast moving average crosses back down below the slow moving average. You will notice the green bar chart here right next to my head. That's your floating PL. That's showing you the profit loss of the strategy over time. So you can see from the SPY daily chart, it seems to be working okay, right? As we jump into more different tests, I'm gonna go through multiple different tickers. We're gonna look at different time frames. But before we do all that, I want to show you guys what this code is capable of because I think I've cooked up something a little bit special here. So if I go ahead and jump into my studies and I click on the settings cog of my code, you will notice that straight from the inputs, I can change the length. So the, the default length is 50 for the short MA and 200 for the long MA or fast and slow. I can come in and immediately change it to whatever I want it to be. Let's say let's do 20 and 100 instead. And the, the default is set to S SMAs, simple moving averages. If you want to use EMAs, all you have to do is select whichever type of moving average you want from this dropdown. If I go ahead and hit OK and apply, you will notice that the moving averages are plotted as spoken to, as the variables were just set to, should I say. The moving averages are not plotted separately. They are plotted here within the code. So they are mapped correctly. And of course, the strategy is adjusted correctly to that as well. So you can simply come into the code and you can test an infinite number of values you want to throw into this to find what works best for your strategy, right? If I go ahead and change this back to the default, you go into the next step down here. I also have a variable for either yes or no on day trade. So if I go ahead and turn this to yes, and then I hit apply. If I jump into the five minutes, you will now notice that it is only entering trades during market hours and it gets out of the trades at market close. So if I jump on the five minute now and if I jump and turn this to no, uh, you will see that of course it still takes the trades, but it's entering, exiting oftentimes in the middle of the night, three, 4 a.m., 1 a.m., whatever. It is entering and exiting trades. Well, the market's not open at those times I just said, but you get my drift anyway. Anyway, um, so if you want to test these permutations on a day trading time frame, all you need to do, come in and flip this Boolean to yes, and that will make sure that that works correctly for you as well. If we go back to no and we go back to the daily chart, I will show you the last permutation. And as you probably saw, that is the ability to turn off shorting. A lot of people don't have the ability to short. They don't like shorting. They don't like the risk associated with shorting. That's fine. If you don't want to short, you're not a short trader. You don't want this strategy to short. So you just want to test longing. All you have to do is flip this to no. And now if I hit apply, you will notice that when it gets stopped out of this long here, you can notice very easily in the floating PL here that it is no longer in a position. It is not flipping short. You can see the floating PL now go flat until it re enters its next position here. So, those are the capabilities of the code. Like I said, I think I cooked up something pretty special here with that. And with that being said, I need to throw it over to the sponsor of today's video, myself. Did you know that for just $25 a month, you can get access to the code from today's video, code from any previous videos, and code from any videos I make in the future? If you click the link at the top of the description below, you'll be taken to my Discord server subscriptions page in which you can sign up for $25 a month, easily canceled whenever you would like. You will get access to the tier three Discord channel, which if you click the pinned messages at the top, 
will give you access to my Google Drive that contains all my codes. So eat one more packed lunch this month and spend that money on some stock market code instead. And thank you for your support. Well, thank you for that, Trey. Sounds like a great deal if you ask me. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into some of the testing of this code now across different variables. So, of course, before I get into this, this is not meant to be, as are any of the videos I make, a real way you should trade the stock market, right? We are not out here creating perfect trade plans. We are proving whether ideas are profitable or not. If the idea of using moving average crossovers is a good idea, one that actually stays in the green rather than one that lose you money, right? And as you can tell from SPY's daily chart, it of course is green. It's up $30,000 on 100 share positions, which is just default. So that'll be all the positions we look at it's up thirty thousand dollars this is on an all-time chart of spy um so once again it seems like a decent a decent little uh helper to your strategy as it could be and it really seems to more even out the PL, right because if you go back here this is during the 08 uh financial uh housing collapse should i say um of course like you flip short and you're even able to make money during this as well so it, it, it seems to protect your downside risk a little bit, this idea of using moving average crossovers. Although I will point out that with these kind of longer time frames, 50 and 200, um, you did get sort of hammered during COVID just because the drop was so hard and fast. You still didn't get stopped out until all the way down here. Uh, so not a whole lot of protection through that. But if we do jump in, let's say we jump in and well, let's do like Let's do like 10 and 50 instead. I'm sure you protect that downside risk a lot more. Yeah, you're getting out here instead, right? So you do protect a lot more of that downside risk. Although this does actually not seem to work as well going to shorter time frames. But um, I will leave testing all the different permutations of MA lengths to you guys that do decide to sign up. Uh, and get access to this code, you're gonna, your then homework is gonna be to take it and test different permutation lengths across different time frames and find what fits your strategies for the best. But let's go ahead and flip around to a couple of different tickers. I always like looking at Tesla because Tesla is an extremely volatile name. Um, and it seems to work okay here as well too. I will point out here that it gets stopped out and then it gets back long, which is great but then it ends up not exiting until all the way back down here. Once again, it's probably a scenario where if you shortened up the shorter time frame, I'm sure you would have gotten stopped out earlier, lock in some nice profit here, but um, that's a pretty interesting permutation. And let's actually jump into uh, some of the day trading stuff as well. If I flip over to the yes on day trading so that it's only trading during market hours, um, eh. It seems to be okay. It, it, it's, it's up $2,000 in the last, this is 180 days on a five minute chart on Tesla. It's up, uh, it's, it's, it's essentially break even. Uh, it's, it's up a little bit, essentially break even on spy on the five minute. So maybe with this idea, it's not necessarily so great. And once again, I'm going to leave it up to you guys because maybe you can find different MA lengths that do work better for trading. But it's sort of just from a quick high level, we're making a YouTube video, um, seems to work better on larger time frames. With that being said, let's jump to the weekly. I need to go flip uh, the day trading back to no. Let's flip to the weekly and look at how it does. I mean, it's now up 22 grand on uh on spy if we go over to tesla it's now up 18 grand here on tesla oh <laughs> it just bought tesla down here at 45 and it's just still never gotten out that's pretty funny um once again would be different with different time variables but the next and maybe last thing i want to look at is some well actually actually let's do this we know these stocks are very strong we are looking at, at, at like just node strong stocks right be careful when you're back testing that you're not curve fitting we know spy and tesla are both very strong in fact if i turn off shorting on tesla now up twenty thousand, on spy now up thirty four thousand turning off shorting right this is even stronger if you're not shorting these stocks but once again you know these names are really strong. You could really put 
any freaking strategy you want to on the S&P since 1993, and you're gonna make money. I mean, it's just going straight up, you know that. So don't put too much clout into this, right? Um, but let's go look at some like some examples, maybe, let me turn back on shorting first, and let's go look at some examples of stocks that have gotten pretty hammered. I like to look at a lot of the COVID stocks for this when I do this sort of testing. Uh, like look at Novavax. Uh, actually, wow, very well on Novavax, up $44,000 because it took this long, obviously for a long time, got stopped out, it flipped short, and it's just destroying the short here as well. So this kind of idea helps to give you the right market momentum for which direction it's moving up or down, right? I like to look at Block. Block's another one that went up and has kind of gotten hammered for a while. And of course, this strategy's done pretty well on that. Let's look at Peloton. Oh, the strategy's only ever shorted Peloton because it IPO'd not too, too far, uh, not too long ago, but still crushed the short on Peloton. Uh, Carvana, I know is another good one. Look at this, just up $34,000. The moving average cross really seems to help paint a picture for what the market momentum is doing, right? Once again, I'm going to wrap up this video here. Not meant to be a trade strategy, just meant to be a way. And since I give you access to this code, yes, it's behind a paywall, but for $25 a month, you can get access to this code. I want you to come in and play with these. I want you to find, like implement this kind of uh, strategy in with your other strategies and see what works the best for you, right? Whether it be for day trading, whether it be for shorting, uh, whether it not be for shorting, whatever it is take the code find what works best for you hopefully you guys enjoyed the video i'm gonna be making a lot more videos like this with automated think script back testing so hopefully you enjoy this content if you do make sure you're subscribed you'll get all the videos in your subscription box for free please like the video if you did enjoy with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and sign out i'll catch you all in the next one